1979, the closure of Dunlop's Peak, with over 2,000 jobs lost, was a turning point on Merseyside. But while shutting Peak, Dunlop was expanding in South Africa. In 1985, Dunlop's worldwide operations were bought by BTR, the British Time Rubber Company, a multinational takeover specialist. It is a long march. We say, don't leave Kosatu. We say, don't leave democratic forces. We say, don't leave Socialist Republic of South Africa. It is a long march. It is a long march. It is a long march. In South Africa, BTR already owned Samco, making rubber belting for the mining industry. The Samco workers play the long march presents their extended struggle to force BTR to recognize their union, now called the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa, NUMSA. For many years, BTR paid poverty wages, broke the EEC code of conduct, and refused to negotiate over union recognition. BTR's empire stretches from the UK and Ireland through Europe the US and Caribbean, Latin America, the Far East, and Southern Africa. The action of the play begins in January 1985. <laughs> I am Jerry Samson, the big boss of Sam Court. Myself. I try to press the workers. I try to crush the union. Look, look, my workers are paid low wages. If Mr. P. W. Porter, he must give me a permission to run this country, to crush the youth, to crush the union, I think this country will be quiet. I think this country will be quiet. My workers, why are you sitting it down? I can't pay you if you're sitting down. What do you want? Tell me, what do you want? Oh, Jesus Christ, bullshit. He want Recognition agreement. Three years not signing full agreement. What must I do? Must think first, then you go back to tell them. All right, my workers. I know what you want. You want your rights and agreement. Give me a chance to think. Go back to work. Go back to work. I am Jay Samson, the big boss of Samcon. Hey, workers, stop it. Workers, why don't you go back to work? Why? No reply, no work. No reply, no work. Oh, shit, it's kind of troubling again. What must I do? When the strike was two days old, 
we expected that we were going to, the management was going to agree that we sit down and negotiate with them. But instead, management decided to sack all the workers. So every, everybody was dismissed. Uh, their aim actually was to crush the union. They got advice that they should just sack everybody, workers will get dissolutioned and come back to work. They really never expected that the strike was going to last so long. When everybody was dismissed, they employed scabs. And we understand that those scabs now have been organized by one union by the name of Uwusa, which was formed by Inkata, and which is one of those people uh, who met at our members uh, during the course of the strike. Management has signed a, recogni a recognition agreement with that union, USA. But as far as protection is concerned, we really believe that they are faced with crisis. Maggie, Maggie, you are losing touch of what my son call in South Africa, my dear lady. It's 28 months now on strike. You know how much I'm losing? I'm losing 8 million, 8 million, oh, in. Owen, Mekki, Mekki, I'm supposed to pay you and others. You are not doing your job. That is unfair. My business is politics. I am the prime minister. If you fail to control your economics, Owen, please don't blame me. Mekki, Mekki, you are wrong. You are wrong. Politics and economics is one and the same thing. I told you that before. Each time you talk about democracy and reform in South Africa, I suffer, I suffer. That is your part. You are part of it. What is this bullshit? What is this commonwealth pressure against South Africa? Do you know what it means to my son God? It means I must close down in six months. Maggie, is that why I made you Prime Minister of Britain? Mekki, you are getting soft, Mekki, damn it. You are getting soft, you finish, oh, Mekki, oh, damn it. Oh, oh, oh. In 1985, when his company set the Sanko strikers, Sir Owen Green's salary was 200,000 pounds, over 100 times the average wage of his Sanko workers. The company's all-male hostel had six to a room and toilets with no doors, but Sir Owen wasn't interested in side issues. British industrial companies do not really commit themselves to the bottom line of profit, so they combine other objectives. That it is important to have a good personnel policy, decent factories, to play a significant social role. They blur the issues. The key is the bottom line. With that philosophy, BTR went on to extract a 1986 average of over £6,000 pre-tax profits from each of its 79,000 employees worldwide. BTR began life as the Birmingham Tire and Rubber Company, later expanding to international holdings in polymers, rubber, plastics, automotive components, construction, electrical and electronic, paper, medical, publishing, sports and leisure. When companies are taken over by BTR, workers see long-standing union agreements torn up, pension rights withdrawn, shop stewards victimized, new technology and flexible working practices imposed. BTR benefits from public ignorance of its history and activities. The Sanko strikers, by putting the spotlight on BTR, are helping all workers facing this multinational. As people were dismissed from their jobs, so we set together as strikers uh, with uh, our organizers and sort of made uh, plans of how we're going to live. So the main reason for us forming this play was to collect donations uh, and get money, put them into the fund in order that uh, we buy food parcels. And at the same time, uh, we thought of taking the play around, around South Africa. We'll give a message to other people who didn't know what's happening about our strike. Actually, we wanted to make history by forming up this play. So 
we wrote short strips uh, in, in, in the beginning, put up pieces of paper together, you know, and uh, there were people were asked to volunteer to take part because we had no experienced people in drama. We had some people from Devon Culture who assisted us. So I would not say it was so difficult. New plays, poems and songs are being created by workers in NUMSA and other unions affiliated to COSATU, the Congress of South African Trade Unions. With 130,000 members in the metal, engineering and auto industries, NUMSA is now the second largest union in COSATU. Hey, comrades! Comrades! I'm a police! Hey, I give you five seconds, man, on this meeting. This means fire! When the state of emergency was declared, uh, most of our leaders, trade union leaders, were arrested. Uh, uh, they were kept into prison without trial. Our general secretary, Moses Mayagiso, who was detained last year, up till today, he is still detained. We want Moses Mayagiso out of detention. There has been an attack on the Cosado house, which was bombed, and we believed that that is one of these uh, states' uh, tactics to crush our federation. The government is trying to just uh, dismantle the, our, the, uni the unity of the workers. The strikers and their families living in Popumene face many other forms of pressure, including the repossession of their property. Repossess! 130 Mbutuza Street. 176 Mpweto Mbutuza Street. 129 Oh, 130. 130. Good morning, Andy. You have 22 months now not paying your rent. We came to repossess your goods. Andy, Andy, please sign here for me. Yeah, 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 you want my friend? Don't sign there, man. I'm coming just now, man. Why are you crying, my friend? Tell me why are you crying? This driver. What he say? He says he came to repossess my furniture. No, man, sorry. That is not us, man. That dead stopped long time ago. No, 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 agreement. No more to dead. That no more repossessing for women. No more cars, no more rent. Hey, driver, sorry, my son. Take your truck. You must go back. Tell your boss that no more possessing for women, no more accounts, no more rents. All the, that woman was involved in the strike because all women, he's got a husband, is dependent in some call, pity at some call. We have been working with a few women there in the factory. So it's about four of them. Well, are on strike. The women, well, they were involved because they were supporting those women and even the, uh, the workers, I mean, male workers, because their husband were working there, so the women involved. They just held the women, uh, 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 women uh, meetings separately from the strikes meeting. But they sort of gave us a report on what they met. Just like in our meetings, we allow everybody in the community to come and listen when we hold meetings. At the end of every week, food parcels are being distributed to workers. Mostly I would say it's mealy meal, sugar, and teas. And, well, and some other times we add beans, cabbage and other vegetables so forth, but we keep changing the items all the time. Well, that is being organized by the Soko. Soko, I mean Sample Workers Cooperative. The cooperative arranged for food passes because we've got people working on bulk buying. Well, I wouldn't say it's enough really because most of the families are big, you know. 
It's hard really to live on these food parcels. Even uh, children for that matter, some of them are undernourished. That's why we've got uh, this health screening project. And we have four doctors who have volunteered to offer their services free of charge. And uh, through the whole survey, it was found that a lot of people are, are sick and children also are undernourished. So there was a feeding scheme introduced for the children. Those who are undernourished, uh, they are being given extra feed. An agricultural co-op where we plant vegetables, you know. We sell them to markets and uh, shop owners. Well, of course, the small remainders we share amongst the strikers. But the profits that we make go into the farm in order to help in buying food parcels. That's how the co-ops work together. Controlled by Soko. They are printing t-shirts, actually, and they also make buttons for the unions. The work is controlled by them. Their job is, is controlled by them. There is no bosses there. They did know about the profit, about uh, their expenses and everything. Some of the t-shirts were banned, like uh, release all political prisoners, free Moses Maegiso. They also banned in South Africa. Because while they, while they, I mean, the police find, find someone wearing those t-shirts, they rather arrest them or take, take the t-shirts away. From the start of the BTR strike, support came from black workers across South Africa. You see, just like the Dunlop plans, they have been making a lot of donations for us. And in some other cases, they made stoppages in their various plans. Dunlop in Ladysmith, Dunlop in Brunoni, and even in Derby. In fact, they wanted to show their bosses that they are in favor of our strike. I would say it happened because we are under the same union. They are still supporters, very strong and they still continue making donations for us. Since the company that is giving us problems, BTR, some call, is the multinational company from Britain, we felt that there was a need of going to Britain and uh, launch this kind of campaign and publicize this as much as we can so that people from Britain should be aware of what the company uh, this company is doing in South Africa instead of helping workers. The union approached the TUC to finance the players to come over to Britain and TUC were prepared uh, to finance the tour, so they did so. The tour has been very successful and we sort of got a lot of response from the people. Uh, they are being able now to know what is really happening down there because all along they had no proper information what is happening with the working class, especially there in South Africa, and our strike. The strikers also paid a social call to BTR headquarters in London. To invite Mr. Owen Green, Sir Owen Green, to come to see our stage play, long march stage play. So, that day, our performance was starting half past seven. I'm not sure that he was coming or he was sending another directors to go to see that what is going on in with some good strikers. But there are many uh, big men, seem like a capitalist, who are sitting in the front city the time we perform. The players met with striking Dunlop workers in Leicester. With reduced manning levels on new machinery, BTR had tried to impose arbitrary selection procedures. The company was forced to retreat. When these people came down here and they explained their situation, that uh, to be on strike for two years, you know, 
we thought it was magic. It is astounded us that people that work on the shop floor could put a play on like that. We all work for the same company and it's a very ruthless company. But I think there's one big difference. They're fighting, not only BTR, they're fighting apartheid as well. And apartheid will back BTR to the hilt. I think that's you... the difference between unions in this country and, and in South Africa, you know, they get murdered over there if they don't sort of tell the line. Another thing we'd like to say about Sarmco, we thought that they've got something that the British trade union is lacking today, and that is solidarity. And we feel from this branch, that it's about time the British Trade Union look what's happening in Sarmcote and start getting the British Trade Unions in that kind of mind to fight such companies as BTR and whatever else. We want a BTR combine. At this plant, we know quite a bit about the same coal dispute. I hope other plants have had the same um, information on it. We've go out as much as we can, obviously, but I hope it motivates them to get a BTR combine. Uh, we will be trying again for one because it's of the utmost importance. That's how we see it. I think it's the policy of the unions. If unions work together, so must workers. They must work hand in hand. It won't stop. I think it's good for them to support us. I mean, it's just uh, vice versa. Even them too, when they're in struggling well, willing to help them in any way, they need help. As a working class, we can also help them as well. As the players returned home, they found their Peter Dunlop colleagues were on strike against wages of one pound an hour. BTR Dunlop locked out and dismissed 1,000 workers and termed the strikers' demand socialist. After a month, the company settled and granted a pay rise, a fast repeated annually. Meanwhile, in the Samco strike, the industrial court in South Africa rejected the union's claim of unfair dismissal. It ignored evidence that management had been aided by the security police and union busting labor consultants and claimed the company had acted responsibly while the union was termed insensitive. In response, NUMSA is intensifying its campaign, now called Blood, Tears and Repression, and is continuing to demand that BTR must negotiate or get out. We wanted the, the company to sit down with the union and discuss the workers' rights. Uh, if, that, if not so, we don't see any point why they should be in South Africa then, if they are not there to help the workers and prepare, be prepared to sit down and negotiate with their representatives. Where apartheid has been eroded, and it has very considerably, a lot of that erosion has been due to very successful companies. Companies that have expanded, companies that have trained more people in more highly skilled jobs, companies that are paying the rate for the job. They are the ones to blame. All these deaths and happenings and police har harassments we have to blame PTR for that, just because they refused totally to negotiate. On the 5th of December 1986, the Amabuto arrived in Popomene. The next day, the Amabuto beat and stabbed people in the street of Popomene. Twenty people were wounded. A young comrade, Alfios Nkabine, died of his wounds. On the evening of the 5th, after the sun had gone down, the Amabuto took our leaders, Finas Sibia, Simon Gubane. They also took Flora Nigati, a young woman. They took them in a car to Lance River. We never saw them again. They were burned to death. Michael, Finas's brothers, only one survivor, the only witness in this case. <laughs> Singing, 
We will never forget you, comrades. We will never forget you because you died for us. We will fight, comrades. We will fight till we died. This is the long march, comrades. We have been marched off the land from place to place, from George to Zenzel, from Zenzel to Mpopomen. We have been marched out of our jobs. Now, time has come, comrades. We decide where to march. We're marching forward to Pretoria. The Sanko strike will reach its third anniversary in May 1988. To support the strikers and get involved in the campaign, contact Soko, care of 12 Manor Road Extension, Leicester, LE2. Clement Mguni in Popomeni still on strike. Aizan Zimande in Popomeni still on strike. Thomas Chalembe at Hawik still on strike. Bungani Mkunu in Popomeni still on strike. Nelson Velase in Popomeni still on strike. Matela Ngubane in Popomeni still on strike. Chopam Chali in Popomeni still on strike. Amanda, Amanda, 